guys and welcome back to my channel. It's Sarah here and I thought I would come back today and show you how I made these um, variegated pink poinsettias. Um, <clears throat> I gave a sneak preview of them yesterday in one of the, the videos I did yesterday. Um, so I thought I would come on and show you how I've made these. Now they're made very similarly to how I made the little small um, red ones um, but obviously um, just a bit bigger and um, putting a little bit of the colour variation in this one. So I'll move these ones out of the way and then we'll get started. Okay so as you can see um, I've got a few things here that I'm going to need um, to make these flowers. So firstly I have cut um, three five petaled flowers um, now these ones are slightly tricky because I don't know if you can see in the camera there if I don't knock the camera you see the little dotted lines down the middle they do have a tendency to split so um, I really like the shape of this um, flower for, for a poinsettia um, but yeah, I've just got to be careful with that dotted line. So if you do use that particular, if you've got that particular die, just um, be aware that that does make it slightly tricky. I'm struggling with the focus on the camera. Um, I've also got some distress inks. So I've got um, spun sugar. I have got worn lipstick. And I've got a distress oxide in peeled paint. And I've got two of the ball stylus tools. So I've got the smaller of the um, mm, icing ones. And I've got the larger of the nail dotting tools. As I cut the petal out three times. I've done it twice in white. And I've done it once in a, um, a very dark green. So we'll start with the white ones. So for this... You can do the same thing for both petals. We're going to take, first of all, the sponge sugar. And I'm just using little um, makeup applicators, little eyeshadow applicators um, that I've just bought from, you know, Pound Shop or Home Bargains or somewhere. And all I'm doing is putting a very small amount of it just up the centre from, from the sort of centre line out. And you don't want lots and lots and you're not going to pick it up loads on the camera because it is it's quite pale. It is quite subtle. Um, and you're wanting that stripe that sort of goes up the middle and, and leaves the edges white. Now, it doesn't matter if it's streaky. Um, that, that sort of in, in a lot of ways gives it a nicer um, finish if you get that sort of slightly streaky sort of look. So all I'm doing is from the middle to the tip, centre to tip, just a little bit of the spun sugar, spinning it round as I go. And then I tend to do this assembly line, so I'll do lots and lots and lots um, throughout the day. Um, you know, I'll, I'll make a batch, sorry. Um, and I will start off by, you know, doing all the same step. So I'll do this for all of them um, and then move on to the next step um, and do it sort of assembly line. Um, and I find it tends to go a bit quicker that way. So I'm just waving goodbye to my daughter. She's off to uni for the day, distracting me. Brush all the way up, centre to tip or tip to centre, doesn't really matter. And it's just that sort of, you can just see it in the camera there, um, it's just started putting a little bit of that um, shading and that colour um, down on the paper. So I'm now going to turn these over. And I'm just going to mist the back very slightly. Don't want it too wet because I'm using um, is it Cranford paper from the range. And it's lovely. It does make really lovely flowers and it's got a lovely textured finish to it. But it's not as sturdy as um, some of the thicker card stocks. Um, and if I get it too wet, it can be a little bit more difficult to work with. So... Um, 
yeah just a, a light spritz still want it damp because i like with all the others i want it to sort of set in that the shape that i put it into which you, you get better in, if it sort of is damp and then dries like that so all i'm doing is with the larger end of this um ball stylus i'm just starting to put a bit of shape into the flowers and the reason that i do it with the, this one first is it, it starts to get that movement, it starts to break up the fibres um, and it just makes it a little bit easier to get the shape in without leaving too many sort of lines and ridges in the paper. Once I've got it starting to curl, I then swap to the nail dotting stylus. Um, and again, I'm just doing the same thing, but I am more focusing on the outside edges and the tip this time like this Oop. so all I'm doing is up and down up and down and then over onto the other one that's it Okay, add a shot a little bit there. Once I've done that, I'm going to fold the petals down that sort of centre line, down the middle of where you've put your, your little bit of the sponge sugar um, shading. You're going to fold along that line like this that's it okay. now I'm taking the worn lipstick and again it's just one of the little um, makeup brushes and I'm just going to flick oops get it in case shot it'll help flick down that line like so just to get that nice sharp sort of line to start with like this. And if you just sort of hold the petal either side it just helps it to sort of stay pinched while you um, put that line down the back keep going off camera obviously not got my camera in a good uh, position today okay going all quiet because I'm concentrating it's not particularly hard so I don't know why I'm concentrating so much and then what I'm going to do is just open the the petals back out and you can see you've got that lovely sort of sharp darker line down the center there but then I do want to just soften that a little bit so without putting any more ink on my um, dauber on my brush thing I'm just going to again gently rub over each of those lines and all that'll do is it'll just give you a little bit more color and it'll just soften that um, line so you've still got a nice sort of sharp line down the center line there um, but you're also getting just a little bit of softness um, in that darker slightly dark color around that and it just helps with that sort of slightly more variegated look and you can just keep playing with that until you've got it the way that you you want it now I do find that to get it to set in the nice shape, I do like to give it another little spritz at this point. Um, but by colouring it that way, I find I get a little bit more texture in the colour and, and it's a little bit more uneven, which obviously ends up um, with it looking a bit more sort of natural. So once I've got them slightly damp again, I'm just going to again run down the sides just to bring that shape back in because obviously I flattened the shape out a little bit there as I was um inking um inking it back up again so again i'm just gonna start bring that shape back in and pinch it back into that um same 
position. And that's actually how I'm going to dry these ones. I'm going to chuck those in my little saucepan. I keep knocking the camera. I do apologise. Chuck those into the saucepan um, and then I will um, zap them with the heat tool in a minute. <clears throat> and that will set them um, like that. So you're rough and ready, just like that. Um, and that's how I'm going to set them with the heat tool. Um, and then we'll do some final finessing. Now I'm going to do exactly the same thing um, with this one. I'm going to um, damp it on the back, shape it a little bit. Um, and then I'm going to fold it on that ridge line. But this time I'm going to um, just brush, brush over the um, ridge line a little bit with the Distress Oxide um, and I'm using the Peel Paint one for this um, and I also like to just sort of flick it on there just on the very tips of these leaves um, just to sort of make it look like the, the, sh the variegation on the leaf is sort of spreading just onto the tip there on this one um, but it's exactly the same process as we've just done so I won't make you watch this one again so what I'll do is I'll go and shape this one and colour this one and I'll dry them all in the in the pan and then I'll um, I'll come back to you Okay, so I have um, gone away and I have dried um, these leaves and as you can see they're all sort of in that sort of starfishy type shape at the moment and they've all sort of set that way because they were damp um, and then I've obviously popped them into the pan and dried them and as you can probably hear they're quite crispy now. So all I'm going to do is just whip round and open them up like that on all of them yes. like that. back to the day the um, dotting tool and I'm just going to bring in that final shape which is I like to sort of have the tip um, and the the edge just at this sort of very top edge here um, a bit more sort of downward because it just gives a little bit more body to the flower because when you then flip it over and do the sort of circle bit in the middle there you can see that it's um i don't want it too sort of puffed in the middle here because that's not what a poinsettia looks like they are quite sort of um angular looking um and obviously, you know, it's not total realism because you, you do get variegated pink um, poinsettias. Um, but obviously, um, they don't look quite like this. But um, but yeah, I, I do like it to be... I'd like, I'd like you to be able to see what it is I'm sort of going for. I, I'd like it to look a, a bit like a poinsettia at the end of it, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, so that's all I'm going to do is just go around on the edge of each one and just bring it in a little bit um, and you can sort of you know faff and play with it as much as you want turn it over and just draw little circles in that center bit and that's what brings the flower up into that sort of cupped um, shape um, and you want one slightly more cupped than the other because obviously they're going to sit on top of each other and you'll find if you leave one reasonably flat and you make one quite cupped it just makes lining it up so that you can off center it just that bit um, easier just just slightly easier and then on the green one I'm going to do exactly the same thing I'm just going to um, open up those um, leaves a little bit more um, and just cup them in the very um, sort of tips there like that and again I'm going to flip that over and I'm going to go lightly um, I do want it to sort of raise the petals the, the leaves very slightly but obviously I don't want to cup it because this is going to be um, the base layer that, that these are going to sit on um, like so okay so once I've got to that stage I'm going to put the, the green leaf to one side um, for a moment and I'm going to concentrate on these two so I'm going to take just a little bit of, this is just white glue, just Anita's tacky glue. <clears throat> um, you can use anything, it doesn't, doesn't really matter. I wouldn't use hot glue just because we are going to pierce this to put some stamens in and hot glue can be quite tricky to, um, to pierce through and to thread stamens through. So as you can see, I've totally off-centred um, the the two petals so that we can see the bottom layer of petals between the two on on this top one here 
and you could put other layers on if you want but I find for paper crafting particularly when you're looking at a flower this sort of size two layers is definitely enough because otherwise it becomes a bit too um too bulky I mean these are obviously not flat um not going to go on flat cards um as it is but um yeah I don't want to make them any more bulky than that so all I'm doing here is just um, going over that center again to, to sort of bring it into the shape that I want it but also I'm really pushing those two glued layers together and really making sure that they bond together well now I would put this to one side normally and just let it dry for a few minutes um, just um, more than anything so I don't gunk my um, my tools up for the next bit so in order to get the stamen through obviously we need to have a hole in the center so I'm just taking my pokey tool to start with and I just make a hole in the center push that up to the hilt of the pokey tool and then take it out I then transition onto the very small end of the um, nail dotting tool but again push it all the way up to the hilt now you would just keep doing this with larger and larger things um, until you've got the size of hole that you want to fit the stamen in. Now on this I want to put quite a few stamen because it's quite a quite a big flower um, and that's the look I'm going for. So I'm going to make it slightly bigger again. Now you could hole punch it if you've got a hole punch. Now I find that a regular hole punch is a bit too big and I've got a smaller hole punch but that one's too small. So I find that this is the best way for me um, to, to sort of get the size of hole that I want I just sort of keep going so this is just a another type of pokey tool I think this came in the um zit kit that I bought which um obviously like I say is just for the craft room honestly um but I bought it for all the loop tools and things but but actually this um pokey tool one's quite useful particularly for this because it is um even if I want to put quite a lot of stamen in as you can see that gives me quite a good sized hole so then I've got some silver stamen um, that I have cut in half so that um, obviously um, they thread easier if you if you cut them in half. Um, I do always try to put the stamen in in odd numbers. Um, I just find it looks better. Uh, five, six, seven, which is what I've put on the medium. So we'll go for nine on this one. Now this might be tricky to thread. Um, because obviously there are quite a few here but I'm going to give it my best shot um, I find that if they're fairly evenly um, held together at the bottom there that tends to make it a little bit easier to thread them um, I probably won't be able to do it because I'm on camera and the pressure's on and everybody's watching and waiting for me to just thread them through and two fell out so I am going to need to just make that hole slightly bigger again. So I'm just going to go in this time. It's the largest end of the nail dotting tool. And I've just got to be careful that I don't split the paper, um, you know, split through the side of the flower. So I'm just going to go again. Try and pop all the stamen together at the base. And then just try and thread them all through. Still not getting those two through. I'll try and thread them through separately. So that's that one. And two. There we go. So they're all in. So I'll push them all down. And you can either have them pushed all the way in like that, or you can just sort of push some of them slightly back out again so you get a slightly more uneven look. Then what you want to do is pull your petals downwards on your flower so that that holds your stamen in place. And then I always go around with the glue gun because I want these to be nicely secured so that I can cut them quite close to the base of the flower um, and then set them into the green leaves. So that's now set like that. So I just need to give that a moment to dry. Um, which I will do and I will come back to you and we will finish it off okay so that's now completely dry I can I can touch that now it's all set um, and now what I want to do is cut these stamen off because obviously we don't want these great big long stamen so I'm going to cut them really quite close to the base so that it'll sit nicely into the final um, green layer so then we bring in the green layer and all I'm going to do with that is take a little blob of glue in the center there a bit of hot glue into the center of that flower and then again I'm going to be looking at the base um, leaves on this flower 
and off centering them so that you get bits of the green poking through um, and I'm going to leave that to set and then you can just sort of play and faff with your, your petals until you've got them just the way that you want them and this you know these are quite sort of showpiece flowers because they they are a little bit lengthier I suppose because you you are doing the inking and things um so I probably wouldn't use loads of them all on one project um but actually they they do get quite quick to make when you um when you get going on them um and like I say if you do it in that sort of assembly style assembly line style where you are um you know doing all the die cutting then all all the pink inking and etc etc um they they do um get made up um, a lot quicker so that's how I make my variegated pink poinsettias for Christmas I hope that you'll have a go I hope this has inspired you to have a go at making some paper flowers um, I will make some other styles I've got some pretty daisy styles um, and some more sort of shabby chic um, style roses um, or, or um, tattered blooms and things that I tend to make so um, as and when I make a new flower I'll try and remember to jump on and do a quick video of it I hope you enjoyed this one um, and like I say I hope it's given you some inspiration to have a go if you did like the video I'd really appreciate a thumbs up um, and also if you're not subscribed to my channel um, it would be really great if you would um, join me on this journey um, as most of you who are subscribed know I'm re relatively new to to YouTube um, so yeah it's all a bit of a, a learning curve at the moment um, and I've got some fantastic supporters and followers who are um, giving me some hints and tips to to help me get going along the way. If anybody's got any um, good suggestions on cameras that they use for filming, at the moment I'm um, doing it with my phone. I'm using a Huawei phone to, to record, um, which is fine, other than this um, autofocus issue that I have where it keeps like trying to autofocus and I can't turn that off in this um, phone. So if anybody's got any advice on that, I would seriously appreciate that. Um, but until next time, um, which will be um, tomorrow, I've got the uh, No Spend November collab starting tomorrow. So there's, I think there's about 30 of us in the collab um, and I am busy finishing off that video um, to go up live for tomorrow. So for now, thanks for watching and I hope you all have a fantastic day. See you soon. Bye.